be Cal, and welcome to my world, and welcome to my new set. I uh, just had my room decorated um, during the whole lockdown quarantine thingy because of the coronavirus. Luckily we, we had started and had everything sort of prepared before we went into lockdown, so it's not like we were in lockdown and thought, what should we do? Well, let's go out and buy DIY stuff. Yeah. So everything got redone, I mean, just everything was removed from the room. I don't have access to all of my stuff. Some of it is at a friend of a friend's house because my friend didn't have enough room to keep everything for me. <laughs> yeah, so floor's done, wall's done, uh, new desk, new layout for my bedroom and I haven't quite figured out where I'm going to record properly so this might change. But anyway, oh, welcome back to my world and today I have a recent video games pickups video. Uh, since we've been stuck in lockdown, been on my PC a lot still and uh, ordered things. A lot of things. Firstly, the big bulk of this video is these PlayStation 1 demo discs. A lot of them. There's about 40 here, I think there's maybe three duplicates, but yeah, I've uh, really had a big interest in collecting PlayStation demo discs as of late. Oh, excuse me, burping because I've got a beer next to me because it's warm. Uh, yeah, I've been really interested in collecting these. You know, here's one of them. Basically, I had a bunch as a kid. Who knows what the hell happened to them all? You know, probably threw them out or tried to trade them in. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, one of YouTubers I watch, uh, Kadikarus, check out his channel, really, really good stuff. Um, he did a big demo uh, video on PlayStation 1 demos. I thought, you know what? I want to collect them as well now. I want to get them. And yeah. Bought an absolute ton of them, and I do plan on doing my own PS1 demo video at some point in the future, so I'm not going to go through and show those off. And also, the demo video is probably not going to just be PS1. Uh, I've got some other things here. I've got a PS2 demo, and a bunch of GameCube discs. Now, these aren't demo demos. These are um, videos, uh, DVD discs that came with magazines where you've got reviews and video features and previews and things of games, but they're all sort of in the, uh, the same vein. Those are GameCube and DS. Right, and after you know, collecting all of these, I tested them all. Um, for a while, I didn't have any of my console set up or anything. I was downstairs on my computer because uh, my room was still being done. I was playing everything through emulator on my PC off the disc. And as I was playing through them all to test them, there were a few games that I genuinely enjoyed from these. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go on eBay and pick them up. And I did. First up, believe it or not, is Action Man Mission Extreme. It has a different name, I think, outside of Europe. I'll put that up on the screen somewhere, if I remember. And basically, while I've only played the first level, the first mission so far, it reminds me of the original Grand Theft Auto, with the top-down view, and you're in your car and you're driving around, mixed with Spy Hunter where you're blowing up enemies with um, machine guns and things coming out of your vehicle. And it's actually really, really fun. I had fun with the demo, so I picked it up. It's still dirt cheap. You can get it for under a fiver, usually. Complete in box, of course. Um, yeah, I don't know what else the, the game has to offer, if there are different style of missions or anything, but yeah, just based on the GTA's sat slash spy hunter matchup, mashup, really enjoyed this one. So, yeah, that's cool. Then there was, and I have to stress this, there were a ton of racing games on these demo discs. Racing games and football games. There are tons of them. Football games, shite. Don't give a fuck about any of them with the exception of FIFA Road World Cup 98, which I already own. Because it's my favourite and only decent football game I ever really like. Anyway, racing games, there were tons of them on here. And I found myself really enjoying a lot of them. Uh, simulation racing games I'm terrible at. Gran Turismo I own. Like the first five, I think, as up to PS3, and I'm just not good at them. I want to be, but I'm not. Arcadey style, yes, very much a fan of. This one, um, I really enjoyed, picked it up, and it is Total Driving. Came out in 1997, I believe, so a decently early PlayStation game. Looks pretty good, in my opinion, but the controls are what really matter for me. Now, uh, you go into this game and you think, okay, you know, you've got your know, square button or your circle, whatever, for your brake and handbrake, like most games. So you press the brake button, go around corners. No, not a chance. 
it kind of reminds me of F0 a little where you've got the shoulder buttons, buttons for left and right, except you've got uh, hard left and hard right with L1 and L, uh, L1 and R1. And basically you want to go around the corner, if you're going around left you'll press the L1 button and you'll go hard uh, left around the corner, and the same for right, obviously. But what's really cool about it is if you you tap the button you'll do a little one, if you hold it in you'll go all the way around but you'll just keep going around in a circle, you have to correct yourself with the opposite trigger and once you get the hang of it, it is awesome and you can just fly around these tracks really really great, had a ton of fun playing this one and next uh, another one, this one uh, has uh, more traditionally style I guess uh, with you know, your brake turning and things to go around corners, but it also has weapons, so it goes to, you know, more like a kart race, a Mario Kart, etc. And that is SCARS. And um, it actually stands for something Supercomputer Animal Racing Simulation. I've, I don't know why there's an animal in there, but I think your cars are sort of designed on animals and things. But yeah, you basically, you sit like a, a VR uh, world or something, you know, it generates all these maps and you go in and you fly around and you've got your cars, it controls really, really well, like I said, and of course you've got different weapons and things, some really cool ones here, you've got your normal missiles, you've got things like a blockade where it'll fire out in front of the track and there'll be like, you know, an electric fence sort of in the middle of the track and if cars go through it, it slows them down obviously. Um, and there's also a ticking time bomb where you press the fire button it'll shoot out either front or behind to the nearest car and it, it, there's a countdown for it and once it gets to zero whoever's got it at the time blows up so yeah really really fun and still nice and dirt cheap and then two more PlayStation 1 games that I got um, I only actually ordered one of these and they accidentally sent me the wrong one, and then they've since you know, posted me the right one, so good for them. Um, it is World Destruction League, so I ordered Thunder Tanks, the first one, and they accidentally sent me War Jets, which I think is the sequel or the prequel, and uh, one came out before the other. Basically a vehicular combat style, obviously this one you're in tanks, this one you're flying around in a jet. I played these originally on PC through my emulator, running off the disc, discs were fine, they played fine. Put them in my PS3, the PS3 does not like either of them. At all. Menus, cutscenes, perfectly fine. As soon as you get into the gameplay, well I should have the footage up on screen now so you can see what they're like. But yeah, um, if I could play these on my PS1 and PS2 when I have access to them, um, it should be much better. Vehicular combat, kind of like a twisted metal -y style thing. Yeah, so those were nice and cheap and interesting to me. Next is a sort of bootleg slash repro, no, not repro, repro will be, yeah. Bootleg cart, I guess, a ROM hack put onto a cartridge, whatever they're called. And this was part of the Twitch Plays Pokemon uh, scene, and it was developed for it. There's one previous to it, uh, Fire, it's, no, not Fire, just Pokemon Red Anniversary. This one is Pokemon Anniversary Crystal. And basically they've taken Pokemon Crystal and they've reworked it. They've added in all 251 Pokemon into the game so you can collect everything. And they've also made their own story basically. You start off in Pallet Town, meet Professor Oak and pick one of the original three starters from Generation 1. And then apparently around the second gym something happens and I'm guessing that's where you move um, to uh, Johto, is it? Yeah, Kanto and then Johto. Uh, Johto for Generation 2 and it's mashed up and seems really fun. They've added some improvements like running shoes, which is a godsend because you never realise how slow you are at moving in Generation 2 with Pokemon Silver until you have to wait ages to get the bloody bike. But yeah, so really excited to play this one. I want to play it on the handheld on my Game Boy Advance SP, but while I have my SP, I don't have my charger. So... Uh, I'll have re footage recorded, of course, of this um, through the uh, Game Boy Player on the GameCube, but I'm probably going to have to wait before I really play through this. Uh, something more modern, got the Nintendo Switch, this was on offer, £7.95, couldn't pass it up. I already own it on the Wii, along with the uh, previous game, but for that price on the Switch, and it's a fun game, yeah, and that is Diblob 2. Kind of like a, a 3D platformer, 
mixed with Splatoon. Which is kind of odd because I know Splatoon had like a story mission which was kind of like a 3D platformer. Basically you have a big open world, you know, each level and you have to paint things in certain colours. So you have to roll around, collect the paint that you need for the colour and roll around the building or the object or whatever to bring it back to what it should be. And there are enemies of course stopping you, you'll have to mix colours to get another colour and things really really interesting really fun games and like i said for nine so it's seven pounds 95 um it's gone up now it was in sale it's now nine pounds 95 so it's still really cheap uh, that's the game collection.net that's where i got it from uh yeah so check it out dblob2 and another recent game and this one uh for the ps4 now is star wars jedi fallen order also Hello Michael, I'm playing it, you're not. <laughs> Sorry, just to uh, message to my brother there, hello. Uh, he's recently just got back into gaming and he got a PS4 and we went halves on this. And originally it was sent to his house and he was going to play it but he was busy still playing Spider-Man. So before lockdown started he came over to visit, dropped it off for me so I could play and then my room was being decorated, my PS4 was no longer set up anywhere, I didn't play it for weeks, you know, lockdowns happened, he can't play it, so now I've only just got around to finally starting it, and it's okay so far, I'm not thoroughly impressed with it, but I do have uh, one slight issue that's my issue, not the game's issue, well, the part of the game's issue, but basically where my new setup is now, my TV is over here, my bed is over here opposite side of the room so they're on opposite walls so sitting back on my bed and playing a game the TV's as far away as possible within my room at the moment compared to what it used to be and the button prompts for when you start off playing the game and it tells you how to do everything are tiny and I can't fucking see them so I have to move really really close to the TV to try and see what the fuck button I'm supposed to press because instead of having you know like you know, X being blue and triangle being green, you know, colour coordinated. No, they just it's just black and white, so you, you can't even sort of just glance at it and see, oh, it's the blue button, that's the X. No, you have to really fucking look in the tiny. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing through the story for this and uh, obviously to go around using force powers and the lightsaber. So yeah, and also my brother can't play it until lockdown's over. <laughs> Uh, right, yeah, um, some PSP games now that my brother can get back at me because I can't play them because he borrowed my PSP ages ago and I haven't got it back yet. So, yeah, the footage for these will be on emulator. I'm using PPSSPP if anyone's interested. The best uh, PSP emulator for computers, in my opinion. First is Smackdown vs. Raw 2008 featuring ECW, um, just for my wrestling game collection. Uh, I own this on the Wii, it's the worst wrestling game ever for the Wii. Um, and I think I own it on PS2, you know, it's fine. The Smackdown vs Raw series for me went downhill after Raw 6, but yeah, it's for the collection. Uh, next is a game that Metal Jesus Rocks used to uh, pimp out quite a bit in his videos. It's because of him, ages ago he did a big PSP video that made me want to PSP, so that's the reason I got one. And it's also the reason I picked up Pursuit Force. And you're a cop going around in a car, you're driving, and there's some action scenes, and... Yeah, I haven't got around to testing it yet, but it looks really fun and it was cheap, so I've added that to the collection. Oh, sorry, it's really warm. Oh. Right, um, a PS2 game now. I'm going to give another shout out to the third YouTuber YouTuber in this video who are all better and more successful than me. So if you go watch them, don't, don't stop watching me, watch them as well. Otherwise nobody will watch me. Anyway, um, YouTuber I really like, Nitro Rad. His big thing is 3D platformers, mostly. Uh, he does tons of other stuff and every April Fool's Day now he does a big April Fool's special. And... He, they are tremendous, he puts a ton of work into it, builds a set and everything and costumes and gets cameos and things and it's not like he's, you know, one of the top YouTubers or anything and making a ton of money, you know, he just has a big passion for it and he's very good at filmmaking, so yeah. So this year for his April Fool's special he did lots of stuff but what he always does is puts in a proper review during it as well and this one was a PS2 game called Under the Skin. 
And within five minutes of watching his review, I went online and ordered it because I knew this is probably going to shoot up in price now if people realise that A, the game exists because not a lot of people know about it and B, it looks really good. It is, of course, by Capcom. And like he mentioned in his video, it's kind of like a forgotten Capcom game. Nobody really mentions it or talks about it ever, but now they probably will. So, yeah, pick it up while you can, while it's cheap. Basically, you're an alien, you go to Earth, and it's kind of like a mix between Hitman and Home Alone. That's how I describe it. He describes it as something a bit different, but Hitman is in there, where you um, basically sort of like take a photo of a human, kind of like, um, what do you call him? Chameleon in Spider-Man, he'll take a photo with his little belt and then he can turn into that person. And then when you do that you walk around blending with people and then you kind of lay traps down um, for other people and it'll injure them or something and they'll drop money and you have to collect the money. And it's just really crazy, you've got a time limit, you have to try and avoid being captured by the cops and things. Um, you will eventually get spotted and your disguise will go away and you have to run away and get another disguise. Really fun. And of course one of the big selling points on the back there's told Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. There's a Resident Evil 3 based level in the game as well. So yeah. Really fun. Check this one out. Check out Nitro Rad's video on it and you'll see what I mean by the fact it looks really good. Now for some Nintendo Wii games. First up is a double pack that I didn't know existed until a certain Australian friend of mine told me about it and cost me some more bloody money. Um, and I love on-rail shooter style games, arcade shooters on the Wii. Really good with the Wii remote, of course, because you don't need a, a light gun, which requires an old CRT TV. Now you've got motion controls and pointing at LCD and, you know, whatever TVs, flat screens. This one is Gunblade New York and LA Machine Guns two arcade games thrown into one nice bundle. Only just got round actually to playing this earlier before I recorded this video. I wanted to play first, get the footage and then I could talk about it because I don't actually know what the hell was going on. Decent enough, um, really fun, you know the fact there's two in one I think is probably the best thing for them because they're both very similar games for starters and I don't think there would be enough for them to have a single release like Ghost Squad got its own release, wasn't bundled with anything else, but I think that game you know, kind of stands out on its own, is really good. These two, I think, are a bit less than those, but together combined makes a real nice package, and yeah, if you see this one for nice and cheap, only cost me about 12 quid. That's really good, I think, for two games, especially on the Wii when it's like this. It's not the most common of them, I guess. Uh, but yeah, really fun arcade shooters, you know. You can just hold down the shoot button if you want and murder everything, or you can be a bit more strategic. There's no reloading or anything because you're in a helicopter. And yeah, you just get to blast the crap out of stuff. Fun! And one that I finally added to my collection, been after this one for a while, which now means I think I own every single version that Nintendo have released on home console or handheld of the original Super Mario Brothers. Physical or digital. So now on the Wii 25th anniversary of Super Mario Bros. The All-Stars collection. Good and bad in this of course. Obviously you have a nice physical copy of the All-Stars collection for the Nintendo Wii. The bad thing is, it's literally just the Super Nintendo ROM put onto a disc. Nothing else. No extras, no upgrades, no enhancements, nothing. It's literally the SNES ROM. When you go into the game and you start one up, it shows you Super Nintendo controls. Yeah, but it is nice still, I guess, to play that set on the Wii and it's on disc. But of course, what also came with the anniversary set is a second disc. I can get them out. Yeah, yeah come on. Well, firstly, there's the, uh, the All Stars thing. Nice and heavy because it comes with uh, a bunch of different manuals, including, of course, just the All Stars one. Very nice, very nicely packaged. And it also comes with this Super Mario History 1985 2010. Nice little package there. And what it is is an audio CD of you know, the greatest hits, I guess, from the, uh, the original games. And this neat little history booklet. Well, you've got the Super Mario History there. Showing off different games, Japanese versions of them, here are some uh, crazy ideas, 
yeah so just a, a decent enough little package hopefully they're going to do much better now for the 35th anniversary of course the huge rumours going around at the moment is they are remastering a ton of Mario games including the 3D ones finally going to get sunshine in HD I hope please please yeah so it's just nice to finally all these add to my Wii collection and add to my collection of owning all the original Mario Bros game releases like I said I believe I now own it every release that Nintendo have done so lastly two gaming related items that are games first is uh, Complete Solutions the Pocket Power Station guide for Smackdown 2 and some other games Obviously I collect wrestling games, huge fan, and I've also kind of, if I can pick up your strategy guides and things for them, I will. Um, yeah, this one obviously shows off all the movesets for all the wrestlers, gives you info on how to unlock things and cheats and whatnot, and has some other stuff. Power Station was like a monthly or bi-monthly or bi-weekly something uh, magazine which was devoted to cheats each um issue would have one main game where it would cover everything then it have a bunch of uh, other ones where it would do smaller um, guides and things and then a big cheat section at the back. This one's just a pocket guide mainly for Smackdown 2. And lastly, I'm always interested in how to clean up my game cases and get that sticky adhesive off. You know, because you get companies that when they sell them they put those stupid stickers on things and it's just impossible to get them off. Every time I, I go online and see these videos with people showing you how to clean up stuff, they're always from America and they always use particular brands of things to get the sticky stuff off that we don't get over here. So I finally looked into it, seeing what I can get here in England. This is the one that I saw, bought it, been using it, it's fantastic. It's called Desolve It Sticky Stuff Remover and it's fantastic. Really is, you just put some on, leave it for five minutes. Most of it just wipes away literally. Some stuff, if it's been there for ages, might have to leave it a bit longer and just scrape it off a little bit but apart from that it's really good stuff I highly recommend it I got it from Amazon 250ml bottle um, cost about six quid worth it in my opinion well I'm Big Count thanks for watching let me know down in the comments below what you thought of my pickups let me know what you've got and I'll see you again next time